We were just unable to make anything together. I, I made a lot of drawings of things and every time I felt good, they feel, didn't feel good, I felt not so good, they felt really good. And so we were just dancing around each other. It was really difficult until I came up with this uh, idea of um, making um, six objects for Eve. Eve, who's been uh, understood as um, kicked out of the of the, of Eden for being uh, for being so bad, for identifying all the vices of the world, and so I made for Eve six objects, which were all identified with one of the vices, and uh, and to ce celebrate Eve also maybe once for giving us so much pleasure for having these vices. Because, you, of course, you know, our vices are not to be proud of, but we have a lot of fun of them, right? So this was, this, was the, this was the idea to make the Garden of Eden to celebrate Eve. So we made uh, beautiful drawings of Eve with the, with the objects of, uh, of desire and sloth and, and so. So and then, uh, so then the Garden of Eden was uh, a drawing which we made, which was um, which was based on a kind of a subtle background with uh, some kind of a strategic male-dominated fence, which is, suggests a kind of borders, a kind of organization. And then it's got these flowers, and it's got these voluptuous greeneries, and it's got this like uh, beautiful almost sexual shapes, flowers, which in, in a way are sexual parts of, of plants. And then there's the apple, which uh, is shown here and there. And so altogether it was, uh, became, it became uh, when we made it into, into silver, it became just a magical surface. If I, if I design things, I sometimes think, you know, this thing is going to not end up forever, maybe it's going to fall apart, and, and then a kid walks in the streets and finds that little part. It's like, if I think about me being a kid, I was always like looking around, and I always, always find some stuff, right? I find a little rivet or so. And, and I always feel everything you design should be designed in such a way that if I am a kid and I walk on the street, I have no idea what it is. I'm like, oh, oh, what is this? This is amazing. I need this for my collection, right? Especially now, start making clocks while we are sure we don't need them anymore. Because time, we find it everywhere, right? Everybody's got his phone, everybody's got it. Time is everywhere. And, and, and so because we don't need it anymore, that's why we have to make it. That's why we have to make it. Because the clock in the house is something which is a family piece. But the, the clock in your house, there's there were a few clocks, but the, the clock in your house, the one which was on, on, the, on the fireplace, there was this, this clock, right? This clock. It, 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 it counts the time of your family, it counts the time of your life, it counts big amounts of time. So it is not anymore about what's the time, it's about who are we. And so it's a really different and a very important product. And so we started making the big round clock last year, uh, which is like so big round, I mean, you maybe see. Uh, and uh, and uh, as a second one, I want to make the typical uh, old, old, old uh, grand, grandfather's clock and, and we might do other typologies of clocks but, but we, I want to yeah but because I think it's important to, to reinvent the clock as, as, a, as an old-fashioned typology which has lost completely its functionality but is there only for us to connect to and to, to keep as a memory of ourselves I think it's a uh, it worked out really, really, really beautiful. It's a really beautiful piece. Now we start to uh, be able to present the, the glass collection, which I think you've seen, the crystal collection and the ceramic collection. And so you start to see how the materials get, get together. And that makes me super excited. If you see how 
how beautiful this is and how elegant, how sweet and beautiful. I mean, elegant. I mean, it gets really uh, to, uh, to a new level uh, if you see this world coming alive altogether. A good gift celebrates a relationship. That is what a good gift does. You recognize yourself, you recognize the other, and you recognize the relationship. And, and in doing so, I think it's a very important thing. And in doing so, I've learned what one of the most important qualities of design is to give gifts to the world. I mean, they, they have to pay maybe, but you give, you give your, your values to the world in the hope that you have understood them and you show that you love them. I think it's how I, how I still design today, as if I make gifts. Uh, four new lights, four new French pieces, more, more or less. Uh, a, a new setup in Milano, very different. Uh, you will see uh, more carpet developing now also uh, a good amount of uh, wall-to-wall -wall coverings, so uh, broadloom. Um, so it's going to be an exciting year, exciting year. We work with Paul Coxedge for the first time, which is cool. Interesting things.